Hey everybody, welcome back. So we're going to be starting with the foundations. We're going to start with links and images. Links and images are helpful to have on websites because people like to see images and uh, the web is basically just a collection of links. So this is really critical stuff. Links are one of the key features of HTML. They allow us to link to other HTML pages on the web. In fact, this is why it's called the web. In this lesson, we will learn how to create links and some visual flair to our websites by embedding images. Oops. Lesson overview. This section contains a general overview of topics you will learn in this lesson. How to create links on the website, on other websites, how to create links uh, to other web pages, how to create links to pages on your website, uh, the difference between absolute and relative links, and how to display an image using a uh, web page using HTML. So for preparation, uh, we're going to get some practice using links and images throughout this lesson. We need HTML project. Um, cool. Well, I already have that going here. So if we were to list out here, we see we have an index file. This is what we've been working with for a while. Um, I think we could open that by saying uh, open Thor index. And that's the one that we've been working with. So I'm just going to continue working with this. Uh, within that directory, create index HTML, fill it in with the boilerplate stuff. We've already got that. Now, I wouldn't recommend, I'd say almost if you're doing this for the first time, it makes sense to read write all this stuff because the more muscle memory you get, the more you'll remember it. Um, cool. So, with the, uh, finally, add the following h1 to the body. Okay, so here we have the body text, and we can add, instead of useful programmer website, we can say home page useful programmer website. So now if we refresh here, we see home page. So that fills this desire. Uh, anchor elements. To create a link in HTML, we use anchor elements. An anchor element is a button wrapped with an A. So you have your click me here. So let's do that. We can create a P element here, and a closing P element here, and then we can say within here an anchor element that has a closing tag, and we can say click me. Now if we save that and come here, you'll see that it's a link. But it doesn't seem to be working. You may have noticed that clicking this link doesn't do anything. This is because an anchor tag on its own won't know where we want to link to. We have to tell it a destination to go. We do this by using an HTML attribute. The HTML attribute gives additional information to an HTML element and always goes to the element's opening tag. An attribute is made up of two pairs and a name and a value. In our case, we need to add href uh, hypertext, hyperlink reference uh, attribute to the opening anchor tag. This value of the href is the destination we want our link to go to. Cool, so we're going to send it to the Odin project. So here we write href Odin project and we save it. And so now if we click here and we refresh, we have a link that goes to the Odin project about page. Uh, by default, any text wrapped within the anchor without an href attribute will look like plain text. If the href attribute is present, the browser will give the text a blue color and underline it signif to signify uh, it is a link. And it's actually purple for me because I've already been to the About page. It's worth noticing that you can use anchor tags to link in to any kind of resource on the internet. Not just other HTML documents, you can link to videos, PDF files, and so on. But for the most part, you will be linking to other HTML documents. Absolute and relative links. Generally, there are two kinds of links we can think about links to the page on other websites, and links to the pages located on our own website. So there's absolute links, uh, which are pages that uh, internet are called absolute links. A typical absolute link will be made of the following parts, the protocol, the domain, and the path. Uh, I think protocol, domain, and path. An absolute link will always contain the protocol and the domain and destination. So absolute has all the information. And we've already seen the, an absolute link. So this is an absolute link. If you were to go put this into the browser, you're going to go to the Odin About project. Whereas a relative link would just be something that would be like this. And that would not work here. Um, links to other pages within your own website are called relative links. Relative links do not include the domain name since it is another page on the same site. It assumes the domain name will be the same as the page we created the link on. Relative links may include the file path to another page relative to the page they are on. This is quite abstract. Let's see the action example. So, hmm. within the Odin links images directory, create another HTML file named about. All right, so I'm going to have to move this off of the thing. So I'll make a directory, Odin links and images. Why did I make a directory? Because I want to move. Um, 
index.html to Odin links and images slash index.html. And so what's that going to do? That's going to move this index file to Odin links and images. So if I press enter here, now we'll see that in here. And so now I want to change directories into the Odin links. And if I list that there, you'll see my index files there. And so now we want to touch about.html. Uh -huh. And now we want to open about.html. Okay, so that opened it there, and then code about HTML. Cool, and that gets us here. We can close that. Might as well. Huh. Oh, this this is not in the right folder anymore. So let's close that, open up the terminal, and change directories to the desktop. <coughs> Oops, desktop. If we list here, we can go to change Odin links and images, CD, and then we can say code dot. And that will open up Visual Studio Code, trust the authors, and we can have our about page and our index page on the same page. Index page and our about page. Cool. Uh, so we add the following. It seems like they want us to add that, so we'll do that to the about text. We save that and refresh here. We've got our about page. Odin links and images. Nice. And you'll see that the uh, title reflects up here. Cool. So what's the next move? Back on the index page, add the following anchor element. So just about.html. So index page. And here we say just about. And so here we say click here to see the about page. And so here, if we were to refresh, oh, this has changed now because this needs to have a uh, a path there. So what is it? Odin, links, and images. Cool. And now we have, click here to see the about page. See the about page. And when we click there, we go to the about page. So we can link around there. Uh, open the index file and make sure it's wired correctly. Click on the link, should go there. This works because the index and about page are in the same directory. That means we can simply use its name about.html. But we, okay, and I'll just show you that in the finder as well. So just because they're here, you don't have to specify a path because it's a relatively linked thing. And so, yeah. And on our about page, we could say, if we copied this guy and we put it here, um, Instead of saying about, we could say index and click here to see the index page. So if we saved that, now we would have a situation where we could click between index page and about page. We usually want to organize our website directories a little better. Normally we would have the index.html as the root directory and all other HTML files in their own directory. So create a directory named pages within the Odin links uh, images. So here we have all the things that are in here. And so we want to go make deer, and we want to call it pages. So now we see pages as its directory, uh, and move about.html. So we could do that by clicking here and moving it in there, or we could say mv about to pages about HTML. So that would get that there. Refresh the index page on the browser. Okay, so we can close this now that they're linked up. And if we refresh this one, now that won't work. Cool. <clears throat> it will now be broken. This is because the location of the about page has changed. To fix this, you need to update the about link href. So if we go, we can close this for now. We can Now we need to change this one to pages forward slash about. Now if we were to refresh this page, we'll go to the about page. And I think that one will, work, will not work either. So... Um, how do we fix that? We go to the about page and we need to go um, dot dot forward slash. And if we were to refresh, oh, no, we need to go here, refresh this. Now it works. So that's just like saying if you're change directories, if you're in the pages and you want to say link to the index page, well, say you wanted to do that, you could be like open dot dot forward slash 
index, and that'll get you the index page. So it's, it works the same way there. Uh -huh, cool. In many cases, this will work just fine. However, you can still run into unexpected issues for pending dot forward slash before the link will, in most cases, prevent such issues. By any dot forward slash, you are specifying to your code that it should start looking in file directory relative to the current directory. Interesting. I wonder if I did it like that, if it would work. And uh, if we made this guy like that, would it work then? No. Uh, cool. So, hmm. I wonder why I would think that that would work. Oh, it still needs the pages. So let's go back, refresh the page. Nice. Okay, so then the about didn't work that time. Why? It needs to have the dot dot. Cool. So now we've got it working, even though they're in separate folders. Absolute and relative links are a tricky concept to build a good mental model of. A metaphor may help. Think of your domain name town. As a town, the directory in which your website is located slash museum and each page on the website as a room in the town museum. <clears throat> museum movie room and museum shops coffee shop HTML. Relative links like shops coffee HTML are directions from the current room and the museum room to another room, the museum shop. Absolute links, on the other hand, are full directions, including the protocol HTTPS, domain name, and path of the domain. Cool. Images. Websites would be fairly boring if they could only display text. Luckily, HTML provides a wide variety of elements for displaying all sorts of different media. The most widely used of these is the image element. To display an image element HTML, we use image element, like the other ones that we've encountered so far, but the image element is empty, which means it doesn't have a closing tag. Cool. So image elements don't have closing tags. Uh -huh. Instead of wrapping content with an opening and closing tag, it embeds an image into the page using source attribute and tells the browser which, uh, where the file is located. For example, using an absolute path, we can display uh, the Odin project image. So let's go to the index. Hmm. And we can put it here in a new div. Uh -huh. And so now if we come here, refresh the page, we have that. Nice. So we've got an image page displayed. Uh -huh. 310 by 310. Uh, so create a new or directory. Okay, so let's PWD. We see that we're in pages, so we want to change directories back and then make a directory called uh, images. And now if we list them out, we see we've got pages and images. And rename, create a new directory. Rename the image to dog.jpg. Download this image. So what do we do? File, save image as. Okay, well, we can't do that. So let's open it in a new window. Oh, it looks like it just downloaded it. So that will go to my desktop. So it's this dog. That's cute. And so we can change that. Um, CD, now LS, we see that Charles Luvio, this is a dog image. So we want to MV the Charles Luvio to um, Odin links, images, and then within there we want to make it images. And then we still want to keep the same, we want to make the name dog.jpg. So now if we list that, it's not there. And if we change Odin links, and then we go into images, and we list that, we'll see that we have dog.jpg. That's the same thing as just clicking and dragging it over here and renaming it as dog.jpg. But I just do it in the terminal because I think that's what we're supposed to be doing. And I think it's faster. Uh, so yeah, we save it and then, oh, and then we want to uh, set it up. So images dog. So instead of doing the Odin project one, we can just create what's called a relative path to it. And now if we re after saving the index page, if we refresh, we've got the doggy. That's cute. Parent directory is cool. And what if we want to use the dog image on the about page? Cool. So let's go to the about page. Right now there's no images of the dog there. How would we make it 
so that the dog was here. So IMG, and then the source is equal to dot dot forward slash uh, images forward slash dog. So now if we save that, it should refresh with the dog on it. Cool, so the about page has the dog on it. I think that that's what this is about to describe. Cool. Break this down, we're there, finally access the dog. So yeah, the about page is here. It needs to go up one level to images and then it goes into the images folder where it finds the dog. Uh, besides source output, every image element should have an alt text attribute to it. Uh, it cannot be. It, it will be used in place of the image if it cannot be loaded. It is also used for screen readers to describe the image. This is how it looks. So it has alt the Odin project here. As a bit of practice, add an alt image to this. So yeah, alt equals uh, a cute dog. And we could say on the about page. And we'll save this one save the file, come over here where you can add an alt image. It doesn't matter which side you put it on. I probably would normally put the alt images after the source image on the home page. So if we come over here, we refresh. Now you can't see them, but if you right click, you'll see that their alt image is there or the alt text is there for here. And if you right click here, inspect, you'll see that the alt image is here as well, or the alt text. Now say the dog image move to here, uh, that would break this. And so if we refresh, we'd see that the uh, relative path is broken. And so therefore, it shows the alt text to the regular user. Cool. Refresh that, and we'll come back. OK, so I'm really familiar with uh, HTML. I don't think that it makes sense for me to go through these videos. Uh, I encourage everyone who's an early stage programmer, if this is new or difficult to you at all, I really encourage you to go through every single step but um, it's just too much for me to do. What element is used to create a link? Anchor element. What is an attribute? It's one of the uh, things that feed into the, uh, uh, the element. So href is an attribute, and um, source and alt are attributes. What is the difference between an absolute and relative link? One goes completely, takes you, gives you the whole path, and the other one gives you a link that, within that specific project. Which element is used to display an image? The image element. What two attributes do images always need? The source and the alternate text. How do you access a parent directory in a file path? Double dots. What are the four main images formats that you can use for images on the web? Image formats? Oh, JPEG, GIF, PNG, SVG. Cool. I didn't know there was four, but I do. I'm very familiar with all those. Cool, so that's it for the uh, links and images. This is super useful stuff, so I'm, hope you, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for coming, and we'll see you in the next video.